see I just can't see sixty million being enough. It's, we're, we're pushing towards the hundred now because of the whole situation with Grealish. I'm not saying Madison's worth hundred, by the way. Don't you know? Mm. Take my 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 quote out because I don't think he is. But I think... Does he even start for you? Right Sorry. Now? Does he of even start he for you guys? Yeah, right? of course he does. But especially if his fitness is back from the, obviously the the summer break, which it should be by now. Uh, bro, I've been speaking to Leicester fans all summer. They've been telling me. Some people have been salty and been just telling me, "Oh, he's not in the team anymore. That's why he might." Want <laughs> I don't know who you've been talking to. Or, clearly, not real Leicester fans. <laughs> and then another guy told me he's our ninth best player currently. I don't care. He can. Oh involve. my god! Um, but you do realize they are articles there for a reason. Articles are made to sell. Articles are made to sell advertising. That's all they are. Hmm. Don't read every article and go, "Oh, that must be true." Oh, that that could be true. Oh, that could be true. Uh, Santa Claus was true when you were six. Yeah, leaving. Yeah, and also the two fairy. <laughs> I don't really, yeah, really know where it's all started from. With all these accounts going mental it, over it, Madison, it's all started. It really, don't make sense. It's all, it's all started because AFC Bell is one of the more reliable Arsenal accounts. He has, he's the same guy who said uh, Thomas Partey was going to happen, even though everybody said it's not possible for it to happen on the final day of the window. And Arsenal, the whole time, we're speaking to. Uh, the the private consortium to get the Thomas Partey deal done behind closed doors. So on the day of the window, all you have to do is submit the money to La Liga to get the deal done. Lately, Arsenal have not been going directly to the clubs first. They've been going through intermediates to get their deals done. And the, the intermediates that we've been using to get the deals done are, are, are well known and have spoken to the likes of AFC Bell and some other journalists to, to push this out. And AFC Bell doesn't speak about everything. This is how you know he's reliable. He only speaks about things he knows about that he has directly had sources from. So I believe this guy because ev- when every single journalist, Fabrizio Romano, everybody said Thomas Pate to Arsenal is not happening, this guy said it's happening. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and it I happened. I want to just add, Lee, that you have to take into consideration the Arsenal fan base and, I mean, the little hope that we have, right? I mean... Any news article that comes out with any top quality player, uh, being, yeah, excited. you know, yeah, of course, hundred percent, man. I mean, we're we're going into the season with pretty much the same squad except for Ben White and Lukongo, who looks like a great player. But I mean, we can't putting all we can't be putting all that expectation on him to carry us this season like Saka last season and and how previous years we've had our young guns pull us through. So I mean, I think from an Arsenal fan perspective, I mean, we're really just. Uh, holding on to dear hope that we sign some quality player because right now I think the honest and realistic fans know that we shouldn't expect anything different next season with mm. uh, with the squad we're going in with. Yeah, well, I don't know how much Arsenal have actually got to spend, but uh, it's gonna it's gonna cost more than sixty. I don't know where the sixty million figures originally re- come from for James Madison, but obviously because of what the transfer market's shifted to with the stupid, ridiculous amount of money for Jack Grealish, I can't see. I just can't see sixty million pounds for James Madison anymore. He's English. He's, but he's... I think, I think. Sorry to interrupt you with the whole Jack release. Uh, apparently, the hundred mil was part of like a uh, a close release. So if they wanted him, they had to pay that. Um, just Absolutely. to just to add yeah. to that as well. It was written in his contract. Just to add to that as well. Um, mm. the report by AFC Bell actually mentioned that Leicester's looking for a sixty million pound bid to initiate the formal talks. That's not necessarily the price that he'd go for. Um, yeah, that's that's, yeah, that's that's just to get you get your heads in the door and talk. Not worth 100%. it. Not worth it. And, and Lee, also just remember, you mentioned yourself that he's quite injury prone. <laughs> I mean, that, he's the reason he's very injury prone. Well, I think yeah, exactly. So you heard me. For the last year, he picked the hundred mil, right? I mean, isn't Michael, value, my man, going to be devalued because of his injuries. Yeah, I mean, most of the Leicester team for the last eighteen months, we've had like over two hundred games missed combined in injuries in 18 months it's it's frightening so I'm not sure what's going on to be honest with you at the training or, or what but it's not much not just Madison there's a lot going on at the club with injuries I'm not sure why okay let me just ask you this Lee what does Madison bring to an Arsenal team if he did move to Arsenal uh, he's, he has, he's got technical he's just got technical ability he's, he is that magic 10 when he's, when he's on it he's on it he's an absolute baller um, I've seen a stat that he's sitting behind Kevin De Bruyne on, uh, is it created chances or something? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But the problem is, it's having him fit. That's the that's the problem. Uh, well, I have a 
But you don't think he's going to stay fit? <sighs> I don't know. At this point, he looks great. He looked great yesterday. Uh, what, what day are we on now? Monday, uh, Saturday for the Church Shield. He looked, he looked great. But who knows? <sighs> The the question that I, the okay, question and, that I and, have and do you think do you think moving from Leicester to Arsenal at this point of his career is a downgrade? I generally? don't. I think I never said downgrade. I I I think it's a sideways move right now, just right now at the minute. The situation that Arsenal are in, they're kind of they're repositioning themselves, they're reorganizing themselves. They're not the the big gunners that they used to be. Um, and all teams do this. We've seen it time and time again. You know. Uh, look how long it took Manchester United to finally get back into that top sort of two bracket. It took a long time. Different managers coming in and out. And, and you can say the same thing about Spurs. They look like they're on a decline now for a bit. Uh, I know you don't want to talk about Spurs, but at the end of the day, <laughs> they're another big six side. I think Arsenal right now are just in that transition period of finding themselves again. I don't think that's the time to go. I really don't. But that's my opinion. Can I say something? Okay. Yeah. I can't see him leave this season because we have Europe League football and Arsenal mm. haven't. Mm. But maybe next, if you uh, yeah. get top six position. Yeah, yeah, potentially. I think if we slip out of that top six bracket again uh, and miss out, you, you know, Champions League football in particular, I think maybe next season we are going to lose a few players. I think that is the this is the one. This is the final season. If we don't yeah. break that top four, I think we do lose NDD. We do lose Madison. You know, I can see a Tielemans. few players. Yeah. Yeah, but, Lee, but can until I say then, something? I think this season we're safe. Please keep it on topic. Yeah, make or break. I of think course, it's Leicester so related. No, nah, man, the only one you'd yeah, lose is Chilamans. The rest wouldn't be wanted by anybody. Hi, <laughs> Nippin, what were you going to say? Um, yeah, I wanted to follow up on Lee's point. Um, but yeah, um, I don't see you, I don't want to sound horrible, but I don't see you keeping your top players if you don't break into the Champions League mm, position exactly. at the end of this season. Exactly. Yeah, but majority of them have are, are under contract for a long time period, so we're not we're not worried. If you're talking about Saka and Smith Rowe and these kind of guys, there's they just recently signed five. Years I was ago. talking about uh, Leicester, not Arsenal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just always on the defense, you know. Yeah, 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 wanted... yeah. Um, of I have a question. If if I may go, if I may go, I, I wanted to ask Lee in terms of, and keeping on the topic of of James Madison uh, from a Leicester perspective. I mean, you know, what is his role in terms of big games? I mean, a lot of Arsenal fans have seen Mesut Ozil and seen how he disappears in in away games or against the bigger teams. I want to know that if we're spending sixty million on on matters, like what does he bring in, in terms of big games, small games? I mean, is he is he going to be in games just you know kind of coasting? Or is he going to be involved getting into tackles and really, I, I guess, creativity is going to be where he's, he's bringing everything. That's it. The, the, the key for, for Matters is it went sitting behind those those up, up front line and unlocking them. I think he unlocks Jamie Vardy and uh, Patson Dak has got some pace about him. We, we're yet to see him, obviously, in the Premier League yet. But when we do see him, I think we're going to see something special with this Patson Dakar. Uh, that we've signed, um, but I think James Madison's a different player to like how we mentioned Grealish. I think that although they get kind of compared, I think they're completely different players. Um, James Madison isn't one go down the wings and and you know sort of dash and and pace about. He's more of a creative passer and and more fluid on the ball. I think. Um, I think you're going to get a, a magic ten if if you did get him. He's that. He's, he's he is that good. Like I said before, you've got to keep him fit. But I think that your manager has like a track record of like most of your important players getting like long term serious injuries. It just isn't with this mm. Madison. It's been like something that has like recently or even the past two seasons, like your most important players are there has to be something not wrong, but there has to be something they generally need to look at, um, either yeah. from the um, physio team or the oh, fitness, yeah, yeah. because one time, like, okay, I can see it, but it's more than one it or is. two players. It's, it's getting a bit silly. Um, mm. But the, the most recent ones have been a bit, obviously, unlucky. The international tournament, Castagna broke his face, um, you know, and we've just had a pre-season friendly. I'm sure you've all seen the Fafana tackles, outrageous. Um, you know, some of those you can't hold the manager and the training, uh, you know, that they, that they do accountable for. They're just freak accidents and unlucky at the end of the day. But most of it, yeah, it, it is questionable what is going on. 
because there's too many games. It really is too many games we've missed uh, out of the players together as a whole. Um, with with injuries, it's ridiculous. Isn't it the queen?